Okay, so in this uh, presentation, I'm going to pick up on the Bernoulli trial aspect. So I was just uh, looking at Bernoulli, the Bernoulli distribution beforehand. And now what I'm going to do is look at Bernoulli trials. So essentially what we're going to do here is consider an experiment where we're going to carry out N independent Bernoulli trials. Okay, so that's just multiple yes or no trials. Okay, so simple as that. So let's say we're in um looking at 10 patients or 10 people and sort of see do they have a particular disease so 10 yes or no answers so we might have five yeses or uh, five no's or something like that that's the idea there so so the probability of the event occurring p is the same for each trial that's important we're going to sort of see where that comes in to be uh, very important later on okay and the result of each trial is independent of all of the other trials. Okay, so that's uh, so essentially, if I'm uh, tossing a coin um, ten times and it's either heads or tails, so if I've just uh, tossed my coin five times in a row already and I got a couple of heads, a couple of tails, when I uh, toss it again the next time round, it'll the probability of a head will be still fifty percent. Let's say, assuming it's a fair coin. And it'll be independent of all the five trials, the five uh, coin tosses I've done already. Okay. Now, so we can calculate the probability of a particular number of events occurring using the binomial distribution. So this is the big thing we're getting to here, the binomial distribution. Okay. So five events in 20 trials, or so five, out, five successes in 20 trials. Okay, we might be able to calculate that. More than three events in seven, th seven trials. No events in 100 trials. That's just the type of thing we're, we're going to be very interested in calculating. So, so uh, consider this a biased coin example. So, we're, I, previously I discussed a fair coin, but let's just say, for argument's sake, it's a biased coin, okay? Where the probability of, a, of heads is not 0.1, okay? And let x equal to 1 representing a head showing, okay? So, if we get a head, x equal to 1. Okay, so clearly this is a Bernoulli trial with probability p equals zero one. Okay, so if we flip the coin four times, we might inquire about the probability of getting the the sequence head tail tail tail. Okay, or as we're writing it there, uh, one zero zero zero. Okay. So by independence of the trials, we can multiply out all of these probabilities. So the probability of a head, and so this is each trial. So that's the first trial, that's the second trial, third trial, and fourth trial. Okay, so we're four trials here. Okay, so uh, the, the sequence is, is quite important here. So we're, the probability of a head, in this case, is uh, 1, and that the probability of that is not 0.1. The probability of heads, 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 sorry, tails, 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 is 0.9 by 0.9 by 0.9. So altogether we have 0.1 times all of those 0.9s. There we go. So it's 0.1 to the power of 1 times 0.9 to the power of 3. Okay. And, but this is important now. Okay. Just sort of, I'm just going to sort of scroll back here a second and just sort of ha hammer home a point. Okay. So I'm just going back to this uh, uh, slide here and just actually sort of state the ordering here was quite important. I was very particular about that order, that the head um, heads came up first, then tails, then tails. This would be a different set, uh, this, this would be a different scenario. For example, head, tails, uh, sorry, just one tail. So head tails heads tails tails okay and different again from tails 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 heads okay so those are three different scenarios okay where we could get one out of four heads and three tails okay so so what if we didn't specify the order we wish to know the probability of obtaining one uh, one head okay so in this case there are four possible ways we can get one head out of four, okay? Out of four trials, so one head and tr three tails, okay? So the, essentially, you know, in this case, what happens here is that the probabilities are identical to each other. So you can sort of, I sort of have it done out there, that one plus that one plus that one plus that one, 
okay but really they add up all to all the same they read add up to this probability here which we've just calculated already okay so four times that is four times 0 0.1 to the power of one times 0 0.9 to the power of three and if we work it out the answer would be uh, 0 0.2916 okay so that's um, that's the sort of bias coin example. Now you're thinking, is that the way we do it? Not really, to be frank. It's not the way we do it because uh, it's that would just take too long. Now I'm just going to show you here. Similarly, if we were to work out the probability of two heads, there are six possibilities. Okay, so 0.1. Uh, sorry, uh, what am I talking about? One one zero zero. Okay, one zero one zero, and so on. There's six ways we can get two heads out of four trials okay now for each of those trials we're just adjusting we're using the same rationale uh, but the probability uh, would um, be um, calculated as follows 0 0.1 squared times 0 0.9 squared so it's very similar to what we've done the last time around okay so if for each of those possible outcomes there are six of those possible outcomes, so we multiply that by six. Okay, so the probability of two tails will be not point not four six eight. So it's a bit cumbersome, isn't it? Yeah, clearly it's quite tedious to list out the various outcomes. Okay, so what we're going to do here is use the choose operator. Okay, to help us. Okay, so the choose operator. Uh, in case you're wondering, binomial coefficients is another name. Okay. So, how do you calculate that? So, is that does that sort of fit with our uh, sort of? Um, so, how many ways can we pick uh, two uh, six, two items from four essentially? Or how many? That, that's how we're going to be what we're using here. How many ways are there uh, picking two items from four? So, four choose two. There we go. Four factorial over two factorial times. 4 minus 2 factorial, which is 2 factorial, okay. Uh, working that out, uh, 4 by 3 over 2 by 1, the 2 factorials cancel out. Uh, so essentially 12 over 2, 12, uh, which is 6. So binomial coefficients essentially is what we sort of need to brush up on there, okay. So, um, let's, so probability of x equals 0 as number of heads out of 4 trials. Okay, so we're just four trials or four, four uh, toss a coin four times. Okay, we can get as low as zero heads or as few as zero and as many as four heads. Okay, so it's essentially how many, what is the, the, the probability of uh, that altogether? So, um, probability of x equal to zero, we calculated it out there, probability of x equal to one, probability probability of x equal to 2, 3, and so on, okay? So if you were just taught, taught, taught them all up, you would find that the total sum of those probabilities, allowing for a bit of rounding error, would be 1, okay? Now, so let's move on to a couple of things here. The information on the previous slide was is essentially, it can be summarized via a probability distribution, okay? So that's what we're getting at here, okay? Probability distribution, okay. Now, in this case, we're already setting for uh, n to be four trials, okay. Okay, so, um, yeah, the, it's essentially we've built up all the parts there that, you know, how many successes out of four and how many fa failures out of four and 0 0.1 and 0 0.9, okay. Now, so, f um, the for n n trials rather than so it just it doesn't have to be for four it could be five six seven we just replace four by n okay so just see how that works there okay and we're sort of stuck with the probability of p being not point one okay but suppose it was just like not point any any probability okay so it'd be p times x or p to the x okay times one minus p uh, to the n minus x, and that's for each possible outcome. And uh, so, essentially, what I'm getting at there is I'm sort of making a meal of it, really. Just essentially, it's essentially this is the part here. Okay, for n trials, n choose uh, x. Okay, and then for each possible outcome, and how many of those outcomes can you get? For okay, 
So summing it all up, that's the sort of the build the 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 sort of the fundamentals of where this binomial distribution comes from. So let's just so, sum it up here. The binomial distribution is used for calculating the probability of X events in N independent Bernoulli trials. Okay, so that's the sort of key landmark there that we've just reached. Okay, now the key sort of parameters for the binomial distribution are N, the number of trials, and P, the number of successes. That's quite important there. Okay, so that's how we might specify this probability distribution, or how you might specify the, ran, uh, the random variable x, okay? And that's how you would specify the distribution, okay? So essentially, just like as we've done there in the slide, okay? So just as a remark, uh, n is any non-negative uh, integer, okay? Or x is any non-negative integer all the way up to n, okay? Uh, two more things. Um, the expected value of x is n times p, okay, and the variance of x is n times p times 1 minus p, okay. So we're not going to look at how to sort of derive that, but it's sort of interesting, okay. So that is just a sort of Bernoulli trial and how it sort of like creates the probability, the binomial probability distribution.